Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you, Jim. My name is Muhammad al fiqhi I am the Imam of the Islamic Society of Punjab, New York. I just wanted to say that I want to live in a better world. I need to live in a better world. I deserve to live in a better world. So do you. But who am I to make this world a better place? Who am I to fix it up? And with all respect, even who are you? If we all together, what difference can we make? I will tell you two stories, two short stories. The first one happened 4,000 years ago, perhaps. And the other one happened four years ago. The first one's title is, Can I Ever Make a Change? And the second one's title is, Sure, You Can. These two stories are always relevant and more relevant in particular to our current times. So the first story, can I ever make a change? 4,000 4, years ago, there was this uh, tribe, nomads. They just followed water and pasture and grass, wherever they are. And they suffered a lot from droughts. And one day in their ongoing trips, they were going through the desert where they came across water gushing from beneath the ground. And that was amazing in the middle of the desert to have that source of water. And the chief of the tribe suggested a kind of career shift with the whole thing. But you know what? Let's, let's build this as a big, beautiful green oasis. Let's learn agriculture, and so they did. They lived there, and they started cultivating olive, olive trees. They used all the wealth they could dig up to their utmost capacity. And for generations, they lived in peace and love in their ways. Of course, in the very beginning, an average family owned maybe around 100 acres, but through generations with inheritance and they ended up with a family might have an acre or even less of olive trees. Harvest time, they sell their olive and they make oil as well and they sell their pure oil, which was loved by cities and towns far away and around. They always come and harvest to buy olive oil. One day, the chief's daughter got sick. A beautiful young lady, engaged to be married, loved by everybody. But she got sick, seriously sick. Doctors said, or traditional medicine, they said her cure is to bathe all morning in pure olive oil. And he said, this morning, or she will die. Everybody owned few trees, and the chief couldn't but ask people and send everywhere, please, we need your help. We need your help all, all of you. And he ordered the blacksmith to create a huge tub, and he put it on the outskirts of the oasis and said, please, every family, donate one spoon of olive oil. Go overnight. Let's fill this tub in the morning and heal my daughter. Night went on. In the morning, the chief and his assistants go with their horses to pull, hopefully, the filled tub back to his house. To the shock, the tub was empty. 
there wasn't one single drop of olive oil there. The man went crazy. What happened? His people are so generous and kind and caring and giving. But what happened? There wasn't one single drop. You know what happened? What happened is everybody said to themselves, what difference my spoon of oil would make? And everybody will go, why should I? What difference can I make? I wish I could tell you that they were ashamed and quickly they collected the oil and the young lady healed and got married and lived happily, lived happily ever after. Fortunately, these good things do not happen in communities where people are, where people are indifferent. Can I ever make a change? That takes me to my second story. Sure, you can. And this story happened here in America. Irving, Texas, 2016. A true story. May 7th, city council elections. Three people running, the incumbent and two others. And everybody's watching and listening to the candidates and seeing what's going around. The incumbent was seen, especially by minorities, as I heard, as a man of integrity, a man who celebrated the American diversity, a man who dealt with all colors around just as citizens of America. But second runner, adopted a racist rhetoric. All his program, all his program was full of racism. That was seen by a young man who came from Somalia as a refugee. A young man, Somali, now American, refugee, black, poor, Muslim, and disabled. You can't imagine the layers of oppression this young man suffered from. And to the top of that all, now he had to listen to this candidate. That hurt him a lot. And that young man decided, I will not let this man run our lives. I will not let that man take lead. And in a community, never that into elections, that young man, the disabled, black, once refugee, Muslim, poor, American, ask his mother, mommy, drive me tomorrow. I want to cast my vote. That was like amazing in this community. People are not into elections very much. In the morning, his mother drove him to the ballot or a poll station. On his wheelchair, he got into the station. Happy, happily, he just presented his ID, said, I'm here to vote, please. The clerk looked at the ID and said, sorry, sir, you cannot do that today. And the man said, what, what's wrong? The clerk answered, your ID is expired. The man never noticed and said, please do something. I need to cast my vote. So the clerk told them, we can secure your ballot. You can get a provisional ballot. Go to the court, secure your ballot. Within 48 hours, renew your ID and come back. The man did that, got his provisional ballot, went home, tired, a little depressed, but he thought he did what he needed to do. He went with a dream, but the dream didn't come true. Same night, the night of the elections, results on television. The first runner, the incumbent, was seen as a man of integrity, man who celebrated the American diversity, 
got 50 second runner 39 something sir 10 percent and the result is there's gonna be a runoff on june which was the, the month after between the incumbent first and second runners that wouldn't have happened if the first runner got one single vote the young man listened to the news and said mom tomorrow we go renew my id and get my secured provisional ballot ballot it's time to make difference next morning his mom again drove him renewed his id secured his vote the first runner won 50 percent point zero one in his speech of victory he said i know that i won by one vote and i know it's a vote of a muslim refugee i want to meet him and i will always remember that i dedicate this story to every good human being to every caring human being to every donor and philanthropist to every activist of good cause to every social justice advocate who never wondered whether or not he could make a difference because the new fact that they can make a difference and they will make a difference thank you everybody